Hello, everyone. We will be starting with the workshop in a couple of minutes. Meantime, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box. Please mention your educational background and your research interest.
छोटी लग रही है काफी एज में All right. Hello, everyone. A very warm greeting to one and all. My name is Sri Kumar Krishna Kumar, and I would like to welcome you all for today's workshop on Alpha Fold and UCSF Chimera to visualize protein alignment. So, what is this program all about? We all know that proteins are essential to life, and that knowledge of their structure can facilitate an understanding of how a protein works, how to affect it, control it, or even modify it. as a result predicting the 3d structure of protein has been an important open research problem for more than 50 years but now biologists can visualize unsolved protein structures make the most out of ai latest tools and advance their skills in chem informatics within seconds using alpha fold that is why we have designed the workshop to introduce students clinicians and researchers to introduce them to alpha fold and ucsf chimera to visualize protein alignment As part of this interactive workshop, you will be able to learn on how to run Alpha Fold to predict structure from a sequence, search for Alpha Fold models, molecular visualization using UCSF Chimera, and finally a case study on structural alignment and comparative analysis. So, before we begin with today's interactive workshop, let me briefly introduce you to the team behind the program. We are a US-based bioinformatics company. who is working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy to use analytical tools and our mission is to make bioinformatics more accessible the omics logic training has been completed by over 24000 participants from 187 countries in over 300 workshops due to this fast growth our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine local program logistics and adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world this training has been completed by participants in six different specialization tracks which includes oncology infectious diseases precision medicine neuroscience data science for biomedical data and comprehensive training on omics data analysis so how do omics logic resources help advance bioinformatics teaching omics logic is a portal for practical and theoretical learning of bioinformatics It takes a combination of training modules, data analysis tools, curated project data sets and interactive sessions with mentors to give the student a clear path up the Bloom Bloom's taxonomy pyramid. No matter what the user's initial experience with bioinformatics is, Omics logic is a useful tool for gaining a baseline knowledge of the theory behind bioinformatics, analysis of large data sets an introduction to basic coding languages like r and python or even beginning a data analysis project this program comes with an access to the omics logic courses which include courses on bioinformatics precision medicine multi omics including genomics transcriptomics metagenomics and epigenomics data science that includes using r and python and even example projects of different fields which you could learn from and replicate for your research work users will be given directions to access the tbioinfo platform for bioinformatics processing and analysis of data the platform includes demo pipelines as well as data management and analysis cloud infrastructure to run the bioinformatics pipelines different stages of analysis are performed in different sections on this multi omics platform so first of all let's begin by signing up on the omics logic learn portal before that let me walk you through a brief demo on what a completed profile on the portal looks like so once you sign up on the portal these are the features you need to keep in mind that is a completed profile will have a profile image full name with appropriate capitalization link to your social media handles this could be your facebook linkedin instagram or kid or even twitter a brief bio about yourself that will consist of your educational background and research interest The mentor can view your progress under the activity tab and the courses you are currently completing will appear under the courses tab. Finally, after the completion of the courses, the certificates will appear under the certificates tab. So with that, let us begin by signing up on the portal. 
I'm sharing a link to the portal in the chat box. All right, so I hope you have received it. Just click on the link and I'll walk you through the process behind signing up on the portal. So for users who do not have an existing account on the portal, please click on the create an account option that you see here. So once you uh, click on the create an option account, you will be asked to enter your name, your email ID and your password. You also have the option to sign up using any of your social media accounts. That could be your Google account, your Facebook account, your, uh, your Apple account, your GitHub account, or even your Twitter. So I'll take, I'll take a brief uh, pause so that the participants can log in to the account on the portal. And once you have done, please put a yes in the chat box so that I know I can proceed further. So I'm monitoring the chat. Once you have signed up on the portal, or if you have any technical queries, please put them in the chat as well, and our team will be happy to help you. All right, I've got two yeses. I'm waiting for rest of the 40 participants. All right. All right, great. So if you have any queries, please put them in the chat box, and I'm proceeding further. So since I already have an account on the portal, I'm going to click on sign in. A login, a login now option and click on sign in. So once you sign in, you're able to view the various courses and example projects under the courses tab. So please feel free to browse through the list at your own pace after the workshop. Now, once you click on the tab that says welcome back with your email ID, this is the most important step that I discussed during the presentation. So how do you update your profile? Click on the icon that says profile. And here you can update your name, link to your social media handles, and a brief bio about yourself. So under the activity tab, the mentor and the community manager will be able to track your progress. And once you start taking any courses, it will appear under the courses tab. So in my case, I'm completely, I'm currently completing the Python course too. And if you're completing any projects, it will be uploaded here. And if you're enrolling for any of the programs, you will be able to view that here. All right, so, so far, if anyone has any queries, please put them in the chat box and I'll be able to guide you. And with that, now I'd like to pass on the stage to Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, who will be leading uh, today's interactive workshop. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shri Gauri, and hello, everyone. Okay, let me share my screen. Again, hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, session. Um, I'm Mohit, I'm Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, and I have a PhD in computational biology, and I'm an expert in computational structural biology, and uh, have several uh, publications to uh, which I have worked uh, throughout my research and uh, industry career, helping some research groups and uh, during also my PhD work. So uh, today uh, we are meeting to discuss uh, and to learn about uh, some of the aspects of structure prediction. So as we all know, and uh, it would be great uh, uh, if all of you can also introduce yourself in the chat and, and we can have maybe a better um, interactive session here um, as i'm also requesting that if you also have a protein structure that you want to predict in your mind and uh, if you can share the link we can perhaps uh, take a look at that also in the session so it's an opportunity for those who are actually doing something related or would want to uh, learn about protein structure prediction and uh, how to use the alpha fold and uh, more importantly uh, what next after that like uh, if how to validate what what have you predicted is this making sense on or, or not uh, so please feel free to share uh, those information, you can send it to me using direct message, uh, the protein uh, sequence of your interest. And we can take a look at that uh, during the today's session. And uh, we'll try to be uh, trying to be, uh, we'll try to do this together. And if you have those uh, softwares installed, it would be great to uh, do this uh, in sync, which would be to have uh, at least Chimera installed. So it's a visualization software, UCSF Chimera. 
Um, so if you're on um, Mac, uh, then you can use the X version, Camera X, which also has this capability to uh, predict structure from the interface, which is incorporated in the Macintosh version, Mac version. Um, and uh, the one that we have on Windows, which we will also take a look. So I'm having, I have both the systems, Mac and Windows. Today I'm uh, using two logins. So in case you face any difficulties and you have any questions, feel free to ask independent of the platform. Now uh, about the session, um, so AlphaFold uh, and AlphaFold, uh, I think we've been discussing this for a while. And uh, uh, also uh, we have this ongoing training program going on and I'm hoping that some of the participants from the program whom we are working with uh, throughout the sessions and mentorship uh, have also joined today's session and we look forward to their questions. Uh, and in today's session, we, after this uh, wonderful introduction, we have the demonstration and some of the concepts that I wanted to discuss about some of the uh, basis of what we are doing and what uh, is different. And then we have uh, also a guest lecturer, Dr. Puneet. I'm hoping that he'll be able to join. He's running, he's uh, kind of busy, but he he said that he'll be able to join and answer some of the questions that our participants have uh, going through his sessions during the program. All right, so let's uh, start with that. And uh, again, um, yes, Sarah, hi, Sarah. Yeah, we can try with your sequence. It's just that uh, there's one limitation with sequences. Again, I should tell you this, that uh, for predicting sequences of, you know, um, which are larger in size, in length, the number of amino acids they hold um, is uh, kind of uh, directly proportional to the time that is it is going to take. So usually uh, the predictions run on GPU and CPU still uh, because there are a lot of people using this uh, so the prediction would take an hour and sometimes more so we will go through that entire process and uh, yes sarah we will have that so i have worked on this on the on the project and uh, we will schedule a meeting maybe tomorrow or day after to discuss your project and uh, what are the other um, the next things because i think it is mostly about mutations and mutations are so important in 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 the current era where we're looking at the translational uh, aspect by looking at genomic data information and we're looking at um, the mutations and what are the implications in the structure so Alpha fold is one of the way to look at one of the snapshots, but obviously uh, today we are going to discuss that what is actually required to be able to make sense of such a project where you're trying to understand what would be the implication of the mutation on the structure, which could be a single mutation, which usually will not cause any change, major change in the structure if you are modeling it and just replacing one residue with another. But uh, in 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 folding and in uh, in functional implication, how that uh, change in residue can cause uh, the change in interaction network of the entire protein and have a devastating effect or some uh, new features. So yeah, uh, all right. Uh, so as you know, alpha fold two, and I am hoping that you all are aware of what alpha fold is because uh, we also have covered it at one of our free webinars. If you have not, then uh, you can ask the team to share that video with you, where uh, we have also shared the video by the team by alpha fold. So alpha fold two, uh, AF2 was the star of CASP 14. Um, and what is CASP 14? It's the biannual uh, structure prediction experiment. So what they use is that they used uh, noble, uh, noble deep learning and AF2 predicted the structure of many difficult protein targets at a near experimental resolution. Uh, so I hope that you understand resolution. When I say resolution, it means that um, at uh, what detail, how much detail we got uh, from those uh, experiments and uh, what level of accuracy in this con in the context of uh, alpha fold prediction is the uh, is the closest to the native structure and uh, we do that by comparing structures and uh, today we are going to learn about that as well that how do we compare structure what is the statistical 
um, statistical value that is important to understand that how 90% similar and how 80% similar, what is root mean square deviation, all of that. So now coming back to the point where uh, what I was trying to say is that um, that how will the availability you now um, with alpha fold and other softwares you have this option to predict so predict structure of the proteins and uh, they are at a decent accuracy and uh, they're close to they say that it's close to the near experimental resolution so now there's an availability of high resolution st structures how it is going to impact biology so first uh, structure alone does not provide the biochemical function of the protein nor can uh, alpha fold 2 predict the phenotypical function which is often the result of complex interplay of proteins so there could be rnas there could be dnas there could be metabolites um, which which could give us the complete picture now uh, that's why uh, one of the key steps for doing this is the first step which is to get the primary structure and then from that three-dimensional structure you try to model protein protein uh, interactions by looking at the complex uh, complex structures and the complex interplay of protein and dna and all of that so that is one of the possibility to be able to do that model further like move go one step ahead with this uh, with this uh, uh, predictions so another thing is that the structure of a protein can use to inter infer its biochemical function right that's one of the objective but it can also you can also perform virtual ligand screening to predict which small molecules or drugs it might be binding and and how it is binding so that is again a session that is covered in the last uh, last session where we covered a virtual screening and uh, softwares involved in virtual screening, which are publicly available. Anyone can start uh, using them, download the publicly available data from Chem EMBL and other repositories and look for similar structures and uh, use Chem Informatics and then use uh, uh, virtual screening softwares and find out maybe top uh, thousand or top hundred molecules which you would want to dive go next uh, into with them using maybe docking or other uh, protocols now um, that's the strategy um, usually for such uh, such um, such research now uh, sorry for the maybe the image uh, below it's not coming high resolution but uh, what i wanted to say is that even though alpha fold 2 can accurately predict the backbone and the side chain conformation so here on on the screen you can see that um the typical conformation uh with uh, all the atoms which are uh, which are forming the peptide backbone and the different side chain conformations so uh, alpha fold is kind of predicting uh, the backbone and the side chain conformation and it is for a particular conformational state why it is for a particular conformational state because when you crystallize proteins and this is based on the available experimental structures um, that protein is another snapshot of a conformational state however a protein can exist in more than one conformation it can have one conformation in an inactive state and it can have another uh, um, another conformation in an active state. So if you have an active conformation, if an active conformation is predicted by alpha fold two, and and then uh, using it to target the inactive state, it will not work, right? Because there is a slight differences in the conformation. And below the image kind of shows different conformation of a maybe a loop region in a protein and that itself can um, change the uh, function of the protein and the interface and you know having uh, that multiple conformation allows ligands to bind or specificity which is very important in drug discovery and drug designing so prediction of protein structures where the representation using backbone dihedral angles that you can see on the screen has really recently achieved significant progress and that's why i was 
I was kind of discussing in this slide is that uh, what we have been, you know, or used to is uh, structure based predictions. And those predictions are based on multiple sequence alignments and then uh, finding similar structures and then modeling using them as a temp template. And that has been a common practice using either modeler, Swiss model, and all of that, which works really well for closely related proteins. Now, uh, the recent achievements, and this is where everyone should know is on the ongoing surge of uh, deep neural network. So the deep neural network uh, in research in general has a huge implications and has been used so widely. So today we are going to review some of those aspects of how uh, the advancements have come up in deep neural network. And we um, uh, and also we observe that in, that in the protein backbone angle protein backbone and angle prediction research, there has been an overall uh, overall trend to employ more and more complex neural networks. So instead, like people are, what people are doing, uh, they are uh, adding more features. Many of these research groups, they are adding more features that might add to more predictive power to the neural network. But then there is this uh, important aspect in machine learning is that when you have, uh, it could be argued that when you have redundant features that could rather clutter the scenario because uh, more complex neural networks uh, needed to be counterbalanced with the, with, the, with the noise. So, and this is a practical experience that people from machine learning has maybe experienced that when we use a lot of features, then there's a lot of noise that has to be countered. So from artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, perspective, uh, perspectives, problem representation and solution uh, approach do mutually interact and does affect performance. Now, um, that's the key takeaway. Now, uh, a case study. Okay, Shruti and uh, Oliver Stosin, thank you for sharing about your um, current degree and your interest. Um, now, um, as we are discussing this, as a uh, understanding that uh, how uh, the new structure prediction softwares are being used, how they work. So be before we go into the live session, uh, live the demo session, the objective is to for you to understand that what is the logic, how it works. What are the advancements? So that's why we are covering this. And uh, I hope that this is informational. Now, um, something new. So on July 20, uh, 2022, um, a Chinese group, a biotech firm called Helix, Helixon, they launched this uh, software called Omega Fold. I don't know if you have heard about Omega Fold or not. Um, this is after uh, Alpha Fold. So the first uh, computational method to predict, they, they claim it to be the first computational method to predict high resolution protein structures from a single primary sequence, um, like uh, also what alpha fold does, but this is uh, using a different algorithm. So this new study by this uh, Chinese researchers fills a much encountered gap in structure prediction and inches closer to the protein uh, folding in nature. So Omega fold is a protein structure prediction algorithm that uses a protein language model to predict structure. The algorithms, the algorithm works without multiple sequence alignments, alignments, which means uh, it's faster uh, because uh, alpha fold uh, uh, and also works on divergent sequences uh, compared to alpha fold because it uses multiple sequence alignment. And uh, one of the reasons, like uh, if you compare, so unlike alpha fold, omega fold does not rely on the MSAs uh, and then omega fold potentially better suited for proteins that have low sequence coverage. Uh, like because multiple sequence alignment when you do may help omega fold uh, then uh, because it it has that additional information, but it could work without it as well. So omega fold can predict up to like um, at least almost 4000 uh, residues and all. Uh, then about the comparison and uh, this, uh, the like understanding that what are the different models that are available that are really um, at par on CASP, uh, the recent CASP, uh, where there was a um, competition and people are checking accuracy. So the new model developed by Helixon, they claim to be outperform 
uh, Rosetta Fold. So another important software and structure prediction is Rosetta Fold that uh, is widely used and achieve similar prediction accuracy to alpha fold 2 on the recently released structure so in a study the researcher said that they have used a new combination of protein language models that allows them to make, make prediction from a single residue and uh, this is uh, by using geometry inspired transformer model trained on the protein structure so omega fold leverages a deep transformer based protein language model that is trained on large collections of uh, large collection of unaligned and unlabeled protein sequences to learn single and pairwise representation and use it as a feature to model the distribution of sequences now the omega fold uh, the omega protein language model which they are calling plm can capture uh, using that what what this does like in a layman's uh, term is that it uses it captures structural and functional information encoded in the amino acid sequences through M through embedding and then they later feed it to a geoformer uh, geometric inspired transformer neural network to distill the structural and physical pairwise relationship between amino acids finally they predict out of all of this this is kind of complex but uh, when you think about it in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the features then it is actually not and it's developed by research groups so our objective is not to do this and like develop something but to utilize it and understand that how they are different which tool to use when so this is a very important aspect of you know bioinformatics because thousands of tools are you know, available online which one to use for your research and this varies from you know problem to problem so this is that's why biology is kind of challenging so again um, that's what i was coming at that uh, this all of this uh, then finally they do a structural module that predicts the 3d conformation of all the heavy atoms uh, another uh, folding algorithm is called the esm fold uh, on the they it uses a large scale language model for uh, protein prediction the improvements in the language modeling uh perplexity and the structural learning continues through um, i mean they have 15 billion parameters just imagine that it's just because of the uh high throughput and this now computational power this has been possible through uh deep neural network and that's what i was putting emphasis on on comparing few algorithms which uses deep neural network and like alpha fold uses a neural uh, network based architecture and the training proceeds based on evolutionary physical and geometric constraints of the protein structure so that's alpha fold and then you learn about um, omega fold and then esm fold and then um, rosetta fold uh, so all of these folding softwares they are kind of comparable and they could be used to you know if you're working on a really important problem you would want to uh, take opinion like you, when you visit a doctor you have something serious you want to take opinion from several of the doctors similarly in in this case uh, when you are trying to predict a soft uh, predict a uh, structure you would maybe uh, take a look at the other pred predictions and then evaluate which is the best now this is the overview this was the overview this was an understanding of how we can maybe use multiple softwares how they work understand and then use it for uh, our own problem now the last slide is about the um the challenges um, because one of the things that i was discussing with sarah here is also like you know um Mm, modeling mutations so mutation uh, protocols are a key tool in computational biophysics for modeling unknown side chain conformations so in particular these protocols are used to generate the starting structure for either uh, protein docking simulation or protein uh, dynamics uh, molecular dynamics simulations so the accuracy of this initial side chain backbone placement is kind of crucial to obtain a stable and quickly converging uh, in the context of you know convergence comes in the context of simulations so importantly uh, while knowledge of protein structure alo alone does not provide its biochemical much less phenotypical effects which we were discussing previously structure can be an important component of this the challenge is to develop tools that employ the more accurate protein structure to infer molecular function ligand binding protein protein interaction and then integrate this information with ai approaches to predict phenotype from, uh, from genotype 
So that's the entire picture. And that's where we have these several components, which are important. So how inclusion of higher quality structures improves the ability to predict the drug side effects, the efficacy, and the role of missense variations in non-Mendelian diseases, depending on the uh, accurately characterization of the interplay between many, many molecular players. So these are some of the factors. And then clearly there is a dramatic progress, but more has remained to be done with before the interrelationships of protein sequence structure and functional functions are fully understood. That's the conclusion of this. And that's where I think uh, the kind of uh, curiosity should be is that there is a lot of things to do and there is a lot of uh, steps that are required. So just learning about alpha fold and clicking and predicting the software and the prediction is not enough. The logic is more in, uh, more uh, uh, important. And uh, then the, the kind of uh, in-depth understanding. And that's why we are doing this. And that's why we are, uh, we have this program and uh, we as a mentor are trying to help uh, those who are working on this are interested and in looking at a career at it, at it to be able to achieve this within a short period of time uh, and uh, maybe get the opportunity. Now, um, now let's uh, get into the workshop part of things and uh, let's try to do this um, by trying to look at uh, how to how to start finding those uh, 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 structures to predict and also like make maybe take a case study uh, and uh, as i said like if you have any sequence of interest you can share that with us and we can uh, take a look as well uh, all right uh, i'll just stop uh, the presentation here but before that maybe i'll have another slide uh, that tells you about you know um, a pipeline a pipeline which was recently published by a group um, they were doing a, a program with students and uh, they made this workflow to find out or to benchmark maybe some of these uh, methods so to find out if the structure is, to go for a structure prediction uh, experiment and if you're interested in predicting structure and looking at structures and its effects um, and do downstream analysis. One thing you should be know you should be doing first is to know that if there is a, an experimental structure which is available or not, because obviously the most accurate structures are the experimental structures from where we have developed these AI-based models. Because all of this works through machine learning methods. Machine requires to to learn to and for you to make the machine learn, you have to give them which is. Uh, absolutely true or false and that's where we have the experimental structures so if the structure is available or not is the first question you should ask go to pdb or do a blast and find if this sequence of yours is available on the uh, protein data bank or not and um, maybe we can try that step if you're not aware of how to do that let me know in the chat if you know from how to uh, maybe how to look for structures uh, which are crystallized or have experimental information uh, for, from the sequence information. Just a simple blast that could give that answer. And if you are aware of it, all of you, then I'll not take that step. And if you're not, then I can show you how it is done. After that, um, now Uniprot did a great, great job in the last couple of two, couple of years. Uh, integrating all the alpha fold predictions i think 200 million predictions they did and that is integrated in uniprot so we are going to go into uniprot and check those sequences and the prediction and then um, then compare and one of the objective was to do and learn about alignment which we will be doing as well and then um, again the size of the protein is one of the important factor here as i was telling you because you can install it locally and uh, then you have more computational power that you are drawing from your own system and not from the cloud because i think the google collab supports the run for two hours and then there's a paid service uh, that you have to take otherwise you can maybe it's an open source code and you can install it and then you can try it 
on your own system and run for larger size proteins and maybe try maybe fragments if not and if there are like huge proteins and if there are templates available then there's a possibility of uh, getting the structure full structure full in structure of the protein but in a protein sequence of that size there are also unstructured regions that are not well predicted something that we will learn also when we look at the uniprotein trees all right uh, so let's uh, take a look at uh, the practical aspect of doing all of this and uh, i'll take a look at the i will take a look at the questions if there are any questions how to verify the quality of the structure what statistical test alpha fold use yeah uh, let's let me open that page for you and then we'll talk about that and uh all right sarah i read that uh what we can do to do this quickly and uh, there is uh there is a protein structure is being recommended by ankit pink one protein definitely we can try this out check it out and even if we get the result um later we can share it with you and uh, have a discussion around it mm. Yes, Abdul, we can predict uh, vaccine candidate structures. We can predict the three-dimensional structure. Uh, H4 receptor, I'm not sure. We have to look at the sequence and then find out from the sequence if the structure is available or not. If not, then we go for prediction and then we do comparison of what we predict, predicted versus what is, uh, uh, what is, is known. And then we understand the changes. So, okay, without wasting much time, uh, let's uh, start this. And uh, I will, uh, Shubha, Shubha Lakshmi, yeah. Uh, how can we compare our structure from alpha fold two versus original structure PDB? What matrices is RMST? What others? Perfect. Good questions. Let's answer them through practical practical learning um okay now what i am going to do is that i'm going to go to windows and uh, i'll stop sharing here and uh, then i'll start uh, sharing my windows system okay now can you see my screen i think you can all right uh, let's open it open a new tab and start this from the beginning and i was kind of trying the new alpha fold and uh, i got an error which i was trying to solve so you can write this alpha fold collab. That's all I've written. And the first link that comes in, there are two links. One is uh, one is uh, advanced, maybe another one is uh, simple. When you have more uh, more parameters that you can give for those who have done it like several times, they know about the parameters. They can change and play around. They can use the advanced version. You can start with the basic version and uh, and this is how it you go into this now again mm, let me explain this to you uh, how this works um, so alpha fold 2 offers the option to install the package with a docker file or a conda installation script so this is to run like on your system and then both approaches are convenient ways to install the packages both alpha fold two and even the Rosetta fold packages comes in Python. So Rosetta uh, fold provides the infrastructure for condign installation. So for these instruction, it is, it is kind of straightforward to build a Docker or a singularity image. Um, it could be in your campus cluster. So uh, alpha fold two and uh, uh, all of this, maybe they'll typically take uh, with the protein databases, around three terabytes of space. Uh, so if you have that much space, you can have that entire system installed with the, uh, with the databases and all. 
so again um alpha fold 2 and uh, uh, alpha fold 2 provides a python wrapper scripts to run the prediction that is what we are going to use in this uh, in this uh, session and the script expects uh, multiple input arguments that we are going to learn uh, what are the input arguments the name of the faster file the location of the databases if required or the train models if you're putting it uh, if you if you are taking uh, taking the advanced option and then uh, there are ptm and pldlt scores and uh, search path for uh, for software such as jackhammer or marco msa for as, uh, using hidden marco so you can do a lot of customization around it uh, if you if you are aware of uh, the output of these algorithms and how they work now that's about it like an overview of alpha fold uh, collab so as i am just telling you that this is all kind of uh, explained uh, here as well uh, if you start from here uh, this is the database where we can search the sequences of already predicted structures and there is a lot as i was telling you and uh, there was uh, uh, there was So we wanted to start with maybe pink one protein. So let's search pink one protein and see if we are finding something. And meanwhile, as I was telling you that uh, mm, you can find it here and you can run this locally. And I was explaining you this in uh, in summary, the Docker image, if you are here, if you're like listening to this for the first time and you think these are like you know very difficult uh keywords that i'm using you need to go through the script and uh, you'll be able to do this yourself and if you're a program participant then we can have a session for you to install this uh, perhaps uh so that's how you can do this locally uh it's available here this link and now um uh, let's go back then we have this um, uh, to learn about the parameters and here you start uh, start working on this and i'll share um, again the link in the chat for you to learn or uh, use this now you start like this install third party software so you have to just just uh, do the play button just uh, click here and uh, now you can see sorry this warning is coming run anyways i'll do that here you have to maybe use your google login if uh, to run this uh, once you are logged in you'll be able to run run this and this is now installing in this uh, cloud notebook collab notebook uh, the software and you can see what software it is installing so you can check the code here and you can see that it's going to install openmm pdb fixer py3 py3d mall and then uh, hammer and it is going to set the path all of those things that you usually do when you are running this so this is the first thing you do is that you run the uh, uh, the third party softwares and then you download alpha fold and then you insert the sequence now we want to look at the sequence and uh, we will be looking at it pink one protein so the pink one protein comes up as a pink one kinase so it's a kinase uh, now let's go to uniprot from here we can take take a look there and we can open this entry as well to learn more about the prediction um, here um, this is the sequence and this is the predicted structure now you can as i was telling you this before the pldt score and these are different confidence scores so someone asked that question that how do you evaluate so these are different scoring that the software provides when you have predicted the alpha fold these are the things that are going to come up 
and uh, based on the sequence. So I was telling you that in a protein, many regions are like this loop region. We are unstructured. The reason is that uh, from a structural biology perspective is that, that the, these regions are flexible. So even in extracristography, sometimes, many times, these regions are not being able to trace and we are not able to trace them because they are unstructured and they are flexible in nature. They move quite a lot. And uh, that's the reason the accuracy dips here. But there are also other regions where the accuracy is low, such as this helix region, uh, which is low. And this is very low. Uh, this uh, orange region, and I zoom in, here you will see. So why the, this is very low and why this is high? is something that can uh, that we can uh, maybe uh, predict or uh, think of based on the available um, based on the available crystal structures that are there now uh, let's do that um, to understand that this protein with this structure this sequence and this this is how the protein is kind of folding through alpha fold uh, and what are the different um, what are the different structures experimentally available with which are closer to this pro pink one kinase which is what we are taking as first example uh, of, uh which uh, i think uh, ankit shared right now um uh, we go to uniprot and in the uniprot it's important to go to uniprot because in uniprot you will be able to find a lot of other information also which is about the phenotypic uh, characteristics, which is about the function. And if it is involved in, if this protein is involved somewhere in Alzheimer's, then you would be seeing related pathways and such annotation. If it provided that it is well annotated. Now the, the annotation is uh, really good in this region only, but not the entire protein. This is a big protein with 612, like fairly big protein with 612 residues. Now, this portion is well annotated because there might be crystal structures available or some other structures which came in, maybe in different organisms, maybe in different, uh, maybe in different uh, similar proteins, which are also kinases, but not the same kinase. It could be like same, many things. Here you will see that the annotation in terms of function and all this information you will find. And it also connects with, as I was telling you, that this is directly connected with alpha fold. And uh, one thing you should be doing is that find, like there are two things. You have, as I was telling you in the presentation, there are two things. First, you check on PDB if the structure is available or not. Then you check on alpha fold database, whether the structure is available or not, because that kind of uh, eases your, uh, like your, your structure is already predicted and you can use that file directly for going doing the downstream analysis you don't have to go to that step and you can cite this so it's a good practice that's why uh, i'm suggesting so now um as we were here now we can download this structure let's download this structure this is the same place that we got when we were here like it's the same same place so you can go from this uniprod id and you can directly also search this data set, database. Now, what we want to do is download the PDB file, protein data bank file, which is what we are going to visualize in this session. All right, um, now we have downloaded the file. We have the sequence and uh, what we wanted to look at is also the sequence and then check whether how much of this is, you know, experimentally known uh maybe homologs or something like that so what we are going to do now is that we copied this sequence we got the sequence from uniprot please uh note that and then uh we also have the pre predicted structure from alpha fold how do we predict the structure we we simply take these steps we we take step one when what we did we take uh we installed the third party software then what we did we downloaded alpha fold so let's download that this is the next step it's getting downloaded and then we are trying to make a prediction but with already predicted alpha fold structure we have also seen that how the model is looking 
what are the confidence uh, level of this model and we have downloaded the structure and also the sequence so we have also got the sequence uh, like this and i've copied this sequence like this now what i want to do is to know if this sequence is crystallized or part of it is crystallized or they're homologs or not so i'm going to do blast protein blast in on ncbi just google protein blast b ncbi and you'll get here and i think many of you are pretty much versed with this and know know about this but for those who don't i'm just uh, showing them how to do this so you um, have now pasted your query sequence here now what you have to do differently here is just that change the database just use protein data bank now what it will do is that it will search your sequence against the protein data bank and suggest us if the structures are crystallized or not so this is to do uh, mm, uh, uh, searching for sequences that are uh, experimentally derived or not it's the structure is if experimentally derived or not now the second thing you would want to do is um do the uh, know if the structure is experiment uh, if predicted or not and how do we do that i'm going to come to that so protein structure uh, no protein sequence similarity i think It will get me to EBI. This is the one because I was telling you that EBI and EBI EMBL and uh, DeepMind has a collaboration and uh, they have deposited. That's why you can see those structures on Uniprot. So you can perhaps search in EBI also the predicted structures from Alpha Fold. So second part of the analysis the first part was to look at the experimental structures the second part was to look at the predicted structures. so you know now both the ways you learned how to do it i'll show you how to do it in for predicting for finding these it's just like this i'm again gonna share this link with you all on the chat so that if you want you can try this now or later all right so we have both them as both the uh, things actually we have three things going on <laughs> one is alpha fold predictions and this is downloaded now you can paste the sequence here also and then we have this uh this blast going on we will know what uh, experimental structures are there and then we are going to search for the uh for the predicted structures here in this in this uh, in this uh, panel you will find alpha fold db now this is what you have to check and here you want to paste your sequence sorry the sequence is here so i'll paste the pink one sequence and obviously you can do it for your protein i'm just giving this as an example and uh, the session is also getting recorded so those participants will get the recording and they can later try this on, out with uh, their own um, uh, sequence of interest and also connect with us to help for helping now now you have selected this and you you have selected structure uh, repository and you can search uh, with these uh, parameters and you can get a notification via email if it is going to take time now i'll submit this and we also it's still ongoing this uh, is a large protein as i was telling you comparatively 600 residues so it's going to take some time uh, now coming back to alpha fold now the structure you have download uh, now let's download this structure now we have already downloaded this structure now let's open the structure in chimera and visualize this protein and do protein structures uh, alignment 
because that's what we wanted to also do. Sorry. So I'll search for Chimera. I have it installed. If you do, if you have not installed Chimera, I'll show you how it is done. You just simply write Chimera UCSF, and then you'll have the download Chimera page, also the home page. In here, you go and download the Windows version if you're on Windows. You can download the Mac version or the Linux version, whichever version is suitable for your system. Now, after downloading, you need to install it by simply going through the instruction, which are written here. So I've already installed it and it is right here. So the latest version is 1.16 and I think I've installed the 1.16 version, but I also might have the older version, which I've forgotten to uninstall. So I'll check for that, the latest version. here i have the 1.16 version so i'm opening i'm opening this and now uh, we kind of downloaded that file right from alpha fold we did downloaded that by clicking here and the file is downloaded uh here i think no this one all right so if I double click, this will open in PyMall because my uh, my go-to software is that, but uh, both of them are equally good. So you just open this like this. I mean, you have to go to the path where this is uh, kept. So I'll have to go to the downloads here now maybe it's in the work folder i'll just cut and paste it in the download folder so that i find it easily now i'll be able to find it here maybe it requires a refresh right got it here now i'll double click and open this now this is open in UCSF Chimera, which is what we want to learn today. And uh, this is the structure, predicted structure of pink one kinase. Uh, this is a full in structure prediction. So although I have to tell you this, that as it seems, this protein have some important uh, um, structural components which are here and looks like it will also have a binding site here. I mean, that's based on my uh, experience, but obviously, once you look at a uh, surface representation, you will be able to see that. And we can perhaps do that. Let's do that so that we all know the, it might take a while. Okay, this is like this. Now you see that there are grooves. If you zoom in, you'll find that there are grooves, there are tunnels, and there are places uh where there could be lichen binding now why i am showing this that this region which is like the full length region might not be involved in the specific uh specific uh challenge that you're looking at maybe you're targeting this protein maybe you're in inhibiting this protein and there's a ligand here where you can bind this and inhibit and you might not need this region so many times as a computational uh, structural biologist or maybe a chem informatics person you will not be worried about the full structure you are more uh, focused on a specific area of the structure which is well predicted and which is uh, kind of has more information so let's go back to ribbon uh, representation again this is the ribbon representation uh, to check look at clearly and do a superimposition i am waiting for the results from um, NCBI blast to do the alignment. Now, this is important information. Here you see it's a serine threonine protein kinase, pink one, putative, where structure is known. And uh, um, this is the organism. Uh, and this is the score. 
and this is the query coverage means that 79 percent of the uh, alignment is covered uh, which is a good overall good uh, coverage not bad and then the identity is 54 percent these are two parameters that you should be taking a look at obviously other parameters are important as well but these two parameters tells you a lot about the alignment because what you're trying to do is you're trying to align your sequence uh, which is what we pasted from here to the sequences which are available on pdb like crystal structures or um, uh, nmr structures or uh, cryo em structures and henceforth three things to note here two things i uh, two things uh, two couple of things which is one is query coverage and uh, percentage identity third is this accession code now let's take a look at a uh, look at this um look at this uh, alignment in much more detail so if you click all right it'll show it'll take you to to this uh, down below from here uh, or it will expand this and you can check the alignment this typical blast you will see that how the alignment is this is like you know as we saw here this is uh this is 79 percent coverage and 54 percent identity with this uh pdb id 74k now let's download this pdb and compare this with the predicted structure this is the closest structure and we have a predicted one and we want to compare both of them that's the alignment part and there were questions and that's where we want to use this uh, there's a question from dixie can i use autodoc vna or any other visualization tool i cannot seem to download Chimera. So Autodoc VNA is not exactly a visualization tool, but you can definitely use Pymol. I'm going to show it right now. This is going to you. This is another visualization. I'm going to double click as I, this is my default software. So this is Pymol. So you can try Pymol. This is action, show height, level, color. I'll show cartoon. Just this way you are being able to took, take a look at cartoon and in the time in the in the chimera software i also showed you the surface visualization so here also i'll show you the surface visualization um surface now you can see the surface and obviously you can change the color um like this and you can also check the hydrophobicity surface like this so yeah i'm similarly i showed you two softwares one is chimera one is another primal do similar things and uh, maybe i'll come back and again show you how to do alignment in primal but let me show you this first in chimera now where were we we wanted to download this structure 74k now i can directly write it like that on google and it will give me the right entry but i'll show you both ways um sorry now this is 74k 74k and enter it will directly take me to the uh this this is a unique id but again now you can go to pdb sometimes you don't get like sometimes it's a common for that reward that might give you multiple results so you can search here as well you can directly search here or you can search uh they uh, search uh directly write it like this which i showed you earlier and it'll take you directly to the link so this is the link to the experimental structure which is what we want to download now let's also if we are having time let's to take a look at this is done now 
this is a very big protein so maybe we will just use some part of it and we'll get the similar structure because it's uh, we are downloaded already this structure but we are still doing a prediction now in the prediction part when you're trying to predict you can incorporate a mutation or a couple of mutation you can change aspartate to you know uh, to alanine this is a alanine mutation so you can do these things and generate a structure of the mutant variant just to compare and see where this position of amino acid is in the structure and uh, then you can do further analysis and maybe we'll do a session on mutations especially and i'm going to work with sarah as well and then we are going to do a session on mutations because i think it's uh, it's quite relevant uh, now uh, this is this is done it has it has uh, kind of read the file and then search against generic genetic databases and then i'll run the alpha fold prediction it's kind of simple and then you can download the results also it, it kind of provides that after the run so here you can see all of those uh, uh, queries and all of that i think i you have the link and please feel free to go and do your predictions and uh, reach out to us if you face any trouble now um yeah swasti there is is there a limit yes there is a limit uh there is a limit uh of alpha fold prediction i think thousand some residues uh for uh for the online version but i will check and get back to you for this for the uh, four thousand five hundred thirty six i mean i know it's a residue it's a huge protein um i mean it must be interesting but yes uh maybe we can take a look at it and uh, and let let you know if we can do a prediction which could be done locally because obviously this cannot be done on the server uh, but it could be i think done locally and like as i was telling you that you could use multiple softwares as well now um, this was alpha fold please feel free to run and do this now we will go back to the result analysis of alpha fold results and uh, we will download this structure structure of dimeric uh, phosphorylated uh, pediculus humanus pink one uh with king alpha c helix in chain b so there are two chains in this uh, and this is done through cryo uh, electron microscopy uh resolution is uh decent and uh then uh if if you are working on this it's highly recommended that this is a very recent recent paper this just came in 2022 and in nature high impact journal uh activation mechanism i think it's a must read for those who are working on this so this is the way now download this file it's downloaded now let's open this up in chimera all right and just cut this file and put it in my working folder so that is of access access and also like we'll open it in pymol also because someone had some trouble with chimera so that we know who's office all right so now if you see this is a separate uh, uh protein there, there are two proteins now they are they are not aligned and uh, this is the crystal structure this is the model protein with uh the the similarity is also like around 50 six percent or something like this but obviously what we are trying to do here is to compare the structure not the sequence you saw that sequence similarity scores in blast and you can do multiple sequence alignment using, using cluster crystal omega and all of that to get more statistics or do a secondary structure prediction and all of that but uh what we are trying to do here is three-dimensional structure comparison uh, which was the part of this uh um this workshop now uh, let's uh, do this here as well this is loaded okay so yeah here now you have two proteins on the screen and you want to align these two proteins and know statistics wise that how closely they are aligned and uh, if this protein 
one of the objective of alignment is also then you will be able to find the active site in the predicted protein those are some of the applications in kaima what do you would want to do and uh, if you want to do the um, if you want to do the alignment you have to go to tools structural analysis uh, you'll find different tools that can give you different uh, uh, analysis like finding the hydrogen bonds and like uh, putting them up and all uh, structure comparison and there are different uh, these different utilities that you can check out and maybe try them up uh, because it's kind of gives insights but what we are going to use now is matchmaker matchmaker is an alignment tool and in matchmaker you have options to change all of this and if obviously if you are aware of aware of these you can change the algorithm to needleman wunsch and smith waterman many of you who have taken bioinformatics would have learned about the the, the the substitution matrices all of that but we are not going to change anything because we are going to do uh, a default setting which is mostly suitable for most of the problems now what we want to do our reference structure here it is an important aspect our reference structure is the crystal structure our structure that i we want to match is the predicted structure so i have selected earlier both of them were selected i selected this this is a selection this is reference structure this is structure to match you can change that you can keep this as a reference structure and this is a structure to match but as this is a crystal structure and this is a predicted structure so we are using the crystal structure as the reference structure now i'll just say apply and then it will align these so i've applied and it's computing and it's going to align these structures now it has aligned the structure now you see this is the predicted structure versus the and this is chain b so this is additional but you can see that how the other part of the chain is interacting which was not there in your predicted structure now how can you see which one is which because i think you're getting confused so let me do this and we are done with the match maker this is a model panel you can choose whichever you want to visualize this is your crystal structure and this is your model structure you see so there are some regions which are now you can see that site this this part of the interaction because you compared it with the crystal structure now you can do several of such comparison it is required to do such comparisons and how can you do this these several comparisons you can simply refer to your blast results here you will see that there are multiple structures that have come up not just one many so you can find out do some comparison which are closely related up to 50% maybe take this seven eight structures or maybe they many many of them are like copies so maybe three four structures you will get and you will do a comparison that will be a good image for your publication for your report that uh, first image all right so this is how you do it now statistic statistics wise uh, when you run this there is a console okay so chimera command line you can also use command line to do some of these selections and reply log so you have to click on reply log and it will tell you the statistics so the statistics it's going to give you is something like this so this is the value that you have to report in the paper publication or elsewhere or wherever like you're showing this that uh, these many atoms aligned uh, from each uh, amino acid and this is the uh, rmst now rmst of 0.844 means that these structures are close very close because rmst of 1 is also like considered to be close when there is an higher rmst 3 4 2 5 6 then it says like the structures are 
dissimilar from each other, like getting more and more dissimilar. So it's a good alignment that you've got because it's a good, uh, good um, RMSD value, 0 0.084, which is less than one, which is considered to be a good RMSD value. And you can keep this to gain on talk about this structure, which is compared by with another structure. So that's the structure comparison part, and that's the that's the statistical part, and that's how you use Chimera structure prediction. I hope that we covered a lot of things in today's session. Now I'm going to quickly show you how do you do this on using Pymon, which is again very simple. So uh, hide everything. Show cartoon. We have two cartoon representation of two proteins. Now here I'll, there are two tabs you can choose, like you can deselect, select like this, deselect, select like this. Now I want to align this protein, which is the predicted one, AFA0836 to T74K. So I'll align this protein into the crystal structure this protein into the crystal structure. So AF, you see where I'm clicking. I'm clicking in front of AF and I'm clicking the A button because A is action. From action, we'll find different options. In the action, you'll find align. Then you can align to just a selection, but you can align to the entire molecule. Now 74K. This has a different alignment. You see this, uh, this is the alignment that we got from Pymol, which is also a decent alignment, but you can see. Let's check out the RMSD. So the RMSD here, what we have got, and you will get it in this panel, is 347 atoms at 0 0.801. So you got two uh, comparative results, one from Chimera. Chimera gave us how much? Okay. Reply log gave us 0 0.844 between 362 atoms and Pymol gave us less atoms on a better RMSD. So that's the way to compare structures and to report RMSD using multiple softwares. And uh, we learned about Chimera, we learned about Pymol, we learned about AlphaFold, and I think we covered uh, different aspects. I hope that um, this is helpful for many of you. Since AlphaFold predictions are based on crystal structure, can you use the solution structure? No, AlphaFold predictions are not based on crystal structure, Swati. AlphaFold predictions are based on experimental structures, which includes NMR and all whichever, whichever is present on PDB. So it's not uh, only on crystal structures. So um, next question, please the PDB code of the second protein 74K. If you want to take this example, I'll just share the files here. No, I, we just have it here. 74K. I'll just take a look at this file and uh, and you can download this file and replicate exactly the same thing that we did so i'm sharing all these files in the chat please save them and then try on your own um i think uh, that's all from my part today and if we have dr puneet uh, then uh, i'll pass this back to shrigori to take this further all right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. So to start with the next part of today's workshop, which is the Q&A session, I'm delighted to invite Dr. Puneet Kaka. Having a PhD in drug discovery from University of Genova, he is a strong advocate for using advanced technology in pharmaceutical research and development. With that, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Puneet Kaka to start with the Q&A session. So we have... Uh, couple of uh, queries. Uh, is it necessary to report findings from different softwares? Uh, okay, if I can take that up. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't need to report findings from different softwares. It's not necessary. 
you can report one software uh, which is uh, either you know pymol chimera if you are doing a comparative study then you want to compare and then report different software so there are benchmarking publications and all uh, studies where you would want to do that and then there are uh, me mechanical mechanistic or translational studies where you don't have to do that all right uh, i hope that answered your query yes sir so i have also received few personal questions uh, i used alpha fold to predict the structure of a protein that has not been well studied i have a pdb file of the predicted structure now i would like to identify the domains of the protein using this pdb file is there a suitable tool for my purpose what we did today i think you should be able to do that i mean first of all get that information from the experimental structures if there are any and if not then yes i mean we saw that on uniprot that the function of the proteins are discussed in the context of the residue so if it is a well annotated protein you will also find variants and all that information just on uniprot so with that information you can uh, annotate and characterize your protein structure or you can use other structures which are which are uh, similar structures which we did today all right sir thank you so much uh, puneet sir and mohit sir we also have another question please i wish to know how the active site and the residues of the active site of a protein can be found also how to attach ligands and cofactors to alpha fold predicted structures okay so active site uh, prediction there are many tools which are also available for active site prediction but uh, what we are looking at is that uh, in active site uh, there are uh, characterized active sites so to find characterized active sites you can do structural comparison and find such active sites and also find co crystallized uh, or co bound uh, cofactors or ligands based on comparing with other structures which has a similar fold which is through the alpha fold uh, repository or through the pdb repository two ways you can do that another aspect of doing this is to you know take a look at the uh, solvent accessibility surface area and all of that which is like taking a look at the surface and understanding what are the different tunnels and holes uh, and uh, pores uh, where uh, that you can do also using pdb sum so pdb sum is a tool where you can find out about these different sites which are present in your protein uh, all right sir so there is also a question are there any applications to use alpha fold beyond structure prediction uh sorry can you repeat that question uh, uh, shri gari yes sir are there any applications to use alpha fold beyond structure prediction yeah i was telling you know that uh, we have kind of discussed this that uh, what we can do is with that base uh, initial information we can uh, try we would try to infer molecular function ligand binding protein protein interaction and uh, there are so many things that one can do like this can uh, uh, this can be like based on the structure there are several dynamics analysis that one would be likely more likely to do that how these molecules behave in motion so yeah i mean there are a lot of things one can do but like for structure prediction uh, alpha fold is one of the tools but using uh, alpha fold i think uh, there are now uh, pymol scripts uh, sorry python scripts for uh, multimers and there are advanced tools for protein protein prediction complexes also alpha fold is getting used and uh, in the advanced tutorials you'll be able to find them uh, those uh, applications as well as well as as i was telling you that um, for uh, cancer studies and mutations this is an important tool uh, all right so thank you so much and there is uh, another question could you help me i generated the predicted structure protein by using alpha fold 2 my question how to identify the transmembrane domain and transmembrane helices okay mm, uh, so you are reading this i'm currently working on p450 enzymes that's that's the one uh 
it says uh, I generated the predicted structure protein by using alpha fold two. Okay. And uh, my question is how to identify the transmembrane domain and transmembrane helices. Yeah, you can predict the transmembrane domain and transmembrane helices. There are softwares. You can simply uh, use them uh, to predict that. And transmembrane uh, domains and helices have a, have a special characteristics based on the amino acids that they hold, uh, those features of amino acids. So based on that, there are predictions. And the secondary structure prediction tools, they, uh, I think um, Hammer has a transmembrane prediction software and usually the transmembrane uh, sites are like big helices uh, in size and they pass through the membrane uh, and uh, you can take a look at the crystallized recently crystallized transmembrane helices and also like i would recommend all of you to do one thing for sure is to do a structural comparison like thorough structural comparison when you simply do st structural comparison you annotate all these because uh, what all of these tools are relying on is uh, they are relying on the experimental data. So if there is experimental data uh, to correlate with, why not do that? Because that will give you give us the answers. All right, sir. Uh, and then Puneet sir and Mozart, we also have a few more questions. So in a situation where there are no experimental structure and the predicted structure for a protein sequence from alpha fold did not meet the expected quality, how should one proceed? Okay, when there is uh, not much available on experimental structure, it's become very, um, you know, it becomes, uh, it's difficult to validate, perhaps it's, it's, even if you are predicting correctly, you are not sure if your predictions are going to work or not, unless there is a wet lab validation. So that's what I have. I have uh, kind of understood and like realized during my PhD also for those proteins where the structures are not at all possible to build. People use ab initio methods. Uh, and then there are uh, methods where you can think of, you know, folding that protein from the very basic sequence. That would require maybe, you know, microseconds of simulations. So those are different ways. Like either you try to fold it using simulation and run a very long simulation. If it is a small size protein, that is, that is still doable. To, through simulation, long range simulation, uh, and also through ab initio modeling. But if only if it is a small size protein, because if, if it's a big size protein, then these are very complex uh, uh, steps, which are usually not viable. And again, the problem is validation, because when you're going to publish or you want to, want to write about it, the questions uh, would be about the um, uh, correctness of this. and. Uh, there has to be either uh, wet lab studies where you're mutating and showing that this is, this is the effect and this is the correct model. Otherwise, there are ab initio models that are predicted uh, being published, but uh, reliability wise, it's difficult for the community to uh, just rely on that unless there is some wet lab experiments to support that. All right, sir, thank you so much. And uh, I think uh, we could pass on the questions to Puneet sir as well. Could you make him the co-host? Uh, there are a okay. few more questions. I am the host. Um, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Let me do that just a second. All right, sure. So if the participants are having any further queries, please put in the chat. In the meanwhile, we'll answer the ones that have been put in the chat box. Hello, Dr. Puneet, can you hear us? And, and yeah, can you, yeah. can, can we, can we, all right. It's Thank great you. to have you, Puneet. Thank you, Dr. Mohit. Thank you very much. Thank you, participants. Yeah. May I know the question, please? All right, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, the question is, what is the thermodynamics behind the ligand protein interaction? Okay, so thermodynamics is studied uh, can be done uh, in a lot of ways. And 
more important is to understand the kinetics of it. The critical part of understanding the uh, lichen protein interaction is its residence time. So consider that you are developing a non-covalent inhibitor for a protein of, of your interest, and you wanted to understand that how your molecule is going to behave once it is binding to the binding site of the protein or the target of interest. Now, how much time this compound interacts remain in the binding site? That is also important consideration. And all those considerations comes from the uh, from the thermodynamics, from the uh, kinetics studies of uh, protein lichen interactions. Also, when you are doing molecular dynamic simulations, everything, uh, a lot many methods like, actually require thermodynamics to see binding and unbinding of the ligand. So very important aspects and without that, uh, without understanding of the thermodynamics and how it is being used in simulations, ligand binding interactions would be very difficult. All right, sir, thank you so much. And the next question is, I'm currently working on P450 enzymes that use heme as cofactor. Please, how can this be attached to the predicted structure of the P450 for downstream analysis? Okay, I think it's a very good question. So when we perform molecular modeling exercise, no matter what method do we use for prediction of the structures, three-dimensional structures, particularly of the proteins of interest, the problem is uh, how do we uh, locate our um, co, uh, the, the ligand, the binders, or the cofactors attached to it. The, the most appropriate uh, step would be to perform the structure superimposition with the most similar protein um, because in such cases, wherever the cofactors are bound, especially the heme, the site around the uh, cofactor remains conserved. So idea here is to perform the selective superimposition. If the overall super, superimposition of the protein is not great, align them from the experimental structures, try to um, uh, replace the coordinates, in a no, in a smarter way, and then, if possible, do some some minimization steps. I think that should be sufficient just to optimize the interaction with the surrounding residues, and that should be that should be fine. All right. I hope that answered your query. And then next question is: How does alpha fold deal with multi-domain proteins, and what is a good approach predicting for hmm. separate proteins or predicting as a whole? Okay, so good question. I think uh, in molecular modeling, again, it's a challenge for the multiple, multiple quaternary structures of the protein where you have multiple sequences, multiple, they are non uh, So I guess you can mute it. Okay. To predict the individual, predict the individual. Uh, protein structures, understand how these proteins, individual protein sequences or the structures interact with each other, whether they make any symmetry. So these kind of studies are generally published in the literature. More similar sequences, more similar sequences and their structure would be the ideal methodology. How the protein functions, that is also important, the class of protein where the multiple domains or multiple sequence, the quaternary structure you are predicting, how do they function? Um, how do they interact with each other? Um, what is the mechanism of action of those proteins that you want to study? Those kind of informations are generally there in the literature. So basis that is not blindly relying on the method of modeling itself, but you need to collate this information, build your knowledge about the protein, and then individually model and do this uh, uh, do this modeling together. Uh, some commercial software they have the uh, 
ability to model the protein, I believe Schrodinger has uh, this kind of suit available. But of course, in those cases also, they need a reference structure in any way. So the best approach is to understand, to know more about the protein. Consider your protein is the best buddy. We wanted to know more about it. Uh, as you know more, I think you will be able to crack the problem. All right, sir. Then the question is, I am from a computer science background with mathematics uh, background as well and wish to start with chem informatics. Will this workshop be a good place to start? I think a lot. Um, what is happening in the current scenario is we need people who understand both the things. Those who are good in computers, understand algorithms, understand mathematics, and also have the domain knowledge. The amalgamation, the, the joint venture of these two knowledge things uh, is, is certainly very, uh, very demanding in the market. And it's very difficult to get the practical hands-on available uh, in a systematic fashion. So these kind of workshops are very helpful just to speed up get up to the speed in terms of what is uh, what is what a general introduction some hands-on where you can fit find your the exact fit what is interest to you most and those things are you know very very helpful in such a short time you get a lot more information uh, to work on so i strongly believe that this kind of workshops are very useful for for anyone who is expert in one side of the knowledge. Uh, all right, sir. Then uh, another question is, I'm currently working on protein alignment visualization. I'm confused uh, which to use, alpha fold or alpha fold two. Okay, so um, whatever is the latest one, you should always go for this. I don't think there will be much of the difference, but if there are differences, um, think about uh, the accuracy level at your protein class level, if there is any. So <laughs> go to the publication to see if they have any done any classification on that, that okay, for proteases, they are 95% accuracy. Something like and but oxidase is like 80% because of the less number of structures available, for example, at this throwing the random guess. Now, idea here is just to see, but even beyond using any algorithm as a black box, I strongly recommend you to read about the publication. If you're not reading publication, if you're not understanding or you're not considering your protein as a best buddy, it becomes very difficult for you to justify or justify them. You need to understand in and out from cradle to the grave of everything related to that protein, then it gives you a lot of fun. And this is how people build the skill, uh, expertise into one set of proteins, one set of molecules, one set of mechanism, one set of you know, pathways, all like that. They spend huge amount of time of their precious life and then they become expert. So, Reading, reading, reading is the is the first thing in, in science, especially of this science. And, uh, and then you can choose uh, very uh, diligently or very carefully, I would say, the, the algorithms out there. Thank you, sir. And the next question is, how reliable are the alpha-fold predicted structures when uh, there is no experimental data available for that protein? Can we use alpha-fold predicted structures to run some simulations? Okay, so we use, in fact, alpha-fold only when the structures are not available experimentally. So that's the first thing. Then, then only we are going for the prediction. There are some 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 clauses for that. For example, your complete protein size is more than what is available in the experimental structures, right? So for example, your protein is say 1000 amino acid long, but the excess structure is only for 500, but you are interested in other 500, which is 
which does not have any the any any experimentally known structure in such cases alpha fold and other methods of modeling would be very useful but again it's very subjective you need understand how the first 500 is attached to the second attached means how they are connected to each other for example the first 500 that you are seeing in the experiment structure is an extracellular domain the other 500 which does not have the structure experimentally known is transmembrane or intracellular domain then you need to see the reliability because transmembrane domains is completely a prediction and not so many proteins out there in the in the pdp also to give alpha fold a very good guess that what kind of uh, rota merge arrangements or the angle should be ideally for for the amino acid falling into these into these brackets so the point is that if you if you want to do a study but if you don't have anything it's better to to have something and then begin this study. so alpha 4 take alpha 4 like that uh, consider that if alpha fold is not there, you may be predicting with some very rough estimated methods. But since you have some good assumption of how the optimally arra optimal arrangements of your amino acid uh, backbone and side chain should be, you can take it from there, go for simulation if you really want to dig into the more details, then for some simulations as Dr. Mohit was also saying in, in earlier question and then begin your study but that's not the end of things reading is the first thing that should be in the center of it then you then you will be able to answer the the questions that you have framed the hypothesis that you have in mind while predicting the structure so it should be the reading should be in the center Thank you so much, sir. That was really insightful. And then, uh, are there any limitations to using alpha fold that I need to be aware of? If so, what other alternatives can I use? Okay, so alpha fold again is number of amino acids limitations we have already seen. Um, other thing is the the the, uh, the binding ligands, the co-crystal adducts. They will the placement of water they should not be very optimal for example if you want to do some water bridging exercise with your compound and how it it facilitates the binding that kind of study you cannot do you can get the one screenshot of your molecule of the of the protein but if you want to do the dynamic nature of this of the protein then you won't be able to understand these are some of the limitations that you need to think it of. You need to always take this one as a pinch of salt in case your protein is so unique, it does not have any similarity with the existing structures in the data bank. Then again, alpha fold will be a very rough estimate. Um, yeah, these are a couple of uh, uh, issues that I can, I can think it of, or I know at least. Uh, and... And again, for whatever is the challenges, if you have new challenges which cannot be overcome by uh, alpha fold, but I would say don't even think alpha fold will be the worst of solution for all your problems. It's, it's just one biggest step that can solve a lot of problems. That's correct. But there are more ways ahead. It's not like all the problems are solved, all medicine will be discovered no disease will be the disease anymore and everything will be all right unfortunately that's not the case so there's a lot many things to study and find the solutions for all right sir the next question is give distance between the n and c terminals as a distance restraint for a domain that always opens up during minimization runs Okay, so if there is uh, there is some bond which are getting opening up in the in in some minimization, it means that they are not properly connected. I believe so. That should be the case, or you are choosing a wrong method of optimization. So I would say if you if if you have done some peptide building, I guess. Uh, as a peptidomimetics, make sure 
you clean the geometry before doing the minimization so that you understand that all the points are properly connected. Um, a simple step of the steeper descent, uh, conjugate gradient, Newton Raphson would work, or simple energy minimization should also help. A clean up, cleaning up the geometry, cleaning up the structure would be the ideal step from 2D to 3D structure transition. And I think that should solve the problem. I think the bonds are not properly connected to each other. All right, sir. So the next question is, um, hello, hello, sir. I have identified alpha fold structure predictions that might not be in the database. Will I be able to deposit as a student? Um, I guess if that is the case, now I think in all the sequences in SysProd, I see alpha folds uh, structures are available. But in case you do not see your structure available uh, in alpha fold, then you need to make sure your, your sequence is unique, your protein is unique. Just try to search it against the glass P, use glass P against the NR database and then sysprod, uniprod, and, and see. The ideal step would be to deposit your sequence first into the database. Once your sequence gets submitted into the database, alpha fold will automatically pick up the structure prediction exercise. Don't run it if your protein is really new. Don't rush for alpha fold. Rush, rather rush for the sequence submission because that will give you a better, uh, better prospects in future. Thank you so much, sir. And the final question we have is, can we use custom database of protein structure with alpha fold? Would that be a valid approach if I want to predict structures of protein from same family of fold type? So you want to, if I understand, you want to train your uh, alpha fold as a, uh, you want to use your database to train alpha fold selectively or maybe it's kind of using a transfer learning, for example. Or you want to do some, okay, if that is the case, I think the code is there um, uh, and you should be able to do it. But my point is that how big is your data to that point, point of concern? If you have, for example, all oxidases, you just have all oxidases, uh, you compiled and made it, and then you want a hold to be trained on all oxidases and run for a prediction of exclusive oxidases. That can be approach, but I think uh, that may not be a very general one. Also, once you do it and you start publishing these kind of things, then make sure that you do a thorough testing end to end, cross check the results, whatever are out there, whatever they have done. A huge exercise needs to be done. I would say if you are doing particularly this exercise as your PhD work or some very core, uh, you know, uh, modeling stuff, then do it. If your main objective is to uncover the scientific uh, findings of what protein does, what's the function, discover new compounds, then I would say keep that part a little aside and maybe you focus more on the science part rather than building the whole database, learn, uh, get, the, get the alpha code, learn on, on your database and so I think that's a little deviation because that's completely computer science part and this is mostly on the scientific side. So it, it depends on what, what the project. I think that's possible if GitHub code allows. All right, thank you so much, sir. So that was the final question. So if the participants have any more questions, please put that in the chat box. And before wrapping up with the Q&A session, I would like to uh, request Puneet sir to share some thoughts on how one can make the most out of the workshops. You had mentioned some points. If you'd like to add on some more to these points on how you can make them. I think more, most important points, uh, Sonalika and all the positive basis, my, my learning is that you need to have a, a, a likeness for your subject. 
if you really like your subject you want to do a lot of uh, uh, research you want to spend a significant amount of time of your life for the topic then certainly you will keep asking questions discover new and new things about your maybe a molecule maybe a path maybe a drug disease or whatever picking up a disease is a very good idea because it gives you a more holistic view of how you can how 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 to see the diseases discover drugs what are the components and what in 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 chemical informatics if you have a particular interest i would say you pick up a disease of your interest uh, learn about it um, get more deeper into the disease mechanism what drugs is what kind of drugs are already discovered what are the challenges and clinical trials why drugs are failing why drugs are not getting approved or uh, withdrawn from the market uh, why drugs are not so efficacious for those indications a lot of areas are there i think just start from one disease at a time and open up your mind of asking questions more questions about the disease more questions on the drug and cover holistic view of the landscape of how the drug discovery happens once you do that kind of holistic view coverage i think in future you can whatever is a disease i think you can easily uh, be able to find or frame the solutions around um this is what i think it should be go but uh, liking for your subject and a determination that i will spend really good amount of time of my life would be the key step here otherwise you will not keep asking questions on on the topic and you will not build your knowledge around the topic Right. Thank you so much, Pranit, sir. It was really great to have you here, and we had lots of queries from the participants, and it was a really interactive session as well. So, thank you to all the participants as well for your patience. And the video recordings of today's workshop will be mailed to you. And if you have any further queries, you can reach out to the uh, email ID that I've provided in the chat and the contact number. So with that, uh, it's a wrap up for today's uh, workshop. And thank you so much, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Bye, sir.